Hey, guys. <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. Danny Williamson over here. And I'm not sure if I'm live or not. What is going on here? I don't see it live. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Dietrich's not on here with me. Um, I don't think this is live, actually. I do not think it is. Interesting. Yes, it is. All right. If I, if you can hear me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll cut that top part off. Um, I am waiting for Dietrich. I'm not sure that he, he's going to be able to come on after I went live on Facebook and Instagram uh, because he's having some trouble up in Canada there trying to get logged on. So all of that being said, um, it's Sunday night service. It's Sunday night service and I'm Danny Williamson and we are starting the fall season tonight. We are supposed to be talking about emotional intelligence tonight and we still may we still may i'm just not sure lindsay's been trying to get him on so literally the last 10 minutes i've had to pivot instead of canceling this i am trying to figure out what to talk about so i just typed up a whole new uh title here entitled i grew up in a shithole of chaos and i'm going to talk about that but while you guys are logging on, because I know many of you have been very excited that I've taken five weeks off. Well, not excited that I took five weeks off, but that we're starting back tonight. And I do apologize that it appears we will not be talking about emotional intelligence and gut health and using your whole brain and listening with your eyes, not just your ears. I learned also that 90% of all language is nonverbal. I find that fascinating. So, you know, we'll just do what we do. We'll just, do, you know what, we'll just get through this and then next week we'll do something different. So as you get on here, I want to know, are you on here? And tell me where you're from. There are some things at the end. So this is going to be real short tonight, literally real short. I actually am going, I've decided while I was sitting here panicking, literally panicking, I'm going to read a little bit out of the book tonight. The book, you know, is released November the 9th. There's a couple of, um, yeah, and all kinds of um, bookstores have picked it up. So I'm real excited about that. You guys, I'm so glad you're here. But I just want to tell you, yeah, I grew up in a shithole of chaos, just like many of you. My grandfather, he had died by suicide. My mother attempted suicide multiple times. I had, I struggled. I had chronic diarrhea from all the stress. And I had my very first colonoscopy when I was 20 years old. 15 years later, so I was 35 years old, I was still struggling with chronic diarrhea. Now I was itching. I had been diagnosed with lupus. I was struggling with depression, all kinds of gut issues going on. And I was in a very, difficult marriage. My marriage was falling apart all, all, all around me. And I remember the very morning that I decided, you know, it's time for me to die today. And I literally woke up that morning. It was springtime. The sun was shining. And I knew that right then, that day, as clear as a bell, that was the day I was going to drive off the foot of Broadway into the Ohio River the current of the Ohio River, and there was no way anybody would be able to save me. And literally, within a matter of seconds, boom, in the room, jump Jackson and Ella. Mama, 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 get up, get up. We're hungry. Get up. We're hungry. What's for breakfast? Jackson was like six. Ella was five. I don't know, somewhere around there. And I looked in their eyes and I immediately knew that there was no way. I was going to leave those kids with Greg. And so I got up, I fed the kids breakfast and it wasn't much longer. About a year later, I was a single mom, two kids on food stamps and a medical card. No way to support myself. I had just closed my maternity store of 11 years and I applied to nursing school. And one day I'm standing on the front porch <laughs> and I opened, it was cold. It was January. The letters are dated January and I got two letters. The first one said, congratulations, you've been accepted to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing Nurse Practitioner Program. 
holy crap, I'm 40 years old. I'm going to nurse practitioner school with a master's degree in fashion design, by the way. And the second letter said, you and your children, Ella and Jackson, have qualified for 56 more dollars in food stamps this month. Vanderbilt and food stamps, not two work, two sentences, you can, two things you hear in the same sentence very often. So it was about three years later, I'm 196,000 and some change in debt to Vanderbilt as a new nurse practitioner. Not only did I still have irritable bowel syndrome and lupus and itching, I was more depressed. I was actually on an antidepressant. I was taking Nexium. Um, and there I was starting my career. Doctor after doctor after doctor had treated symptoms and never the root cause. And my second job out of nurse practitioner school, the first one I was fired from, that's a whole other story. That's in the book, actually, right here. In fact, I said thank you to Dr. S who fired me in this book. Best decision he ever, uh, best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I was working at Dr. Calb's office and one day he looked at me and he said, Dini, what are you eating? And I was like, what? What do you mean? Eat any, uh, anything I want. And he said, uh, you know, your diet controls your disease, kiddo. Do you at least, do you take digestive enzymes and probiotics? I was like, well, no. Dan, I'm a, almost $200,000 in debt and student loans. I have two kids. I was still on food stamp. No, I don't know. I don't know if I was or not. No. And he said, well, do you know your food sensitivities? I said, no. And he said, well, come on, let's find out. So I did food sensitivity testing that day. Changed the entire trajectory of my life. It led to a full reversal of lupus, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic itching, depression, every chronic lifestyle disease, joint pain that I created reversed after 24 years of seeing doctors. And finally, one asked the right question. I did it by healing my gut, by knowing my food sensitivities, by boosting my immune system. And that's what I've done for the last 11 years is literally helped thousands of people heal their gut, reverse their chronic lifestyle diseases and move on living the life that they have, that they deserve to live. And that's what I do. And I love what I do. I do it every day to the best of my ability. And I just want to say how sorry I am to all of you who have seen provider after provider after provider who have never asked the right questions. What are you eating? If you weren't born with it, you don't have to live with it. Let me say that again. If you weren't born with it, you don't have to live with it. If you turned it on, then you can turn it off. I'm living proof of that. I wasn't born with lupus. I wasn't born with irritable bowel syndrome. I wasn't born chronically itching or joint pain in my hands. My hands are, are what hurt me so bad for so many years. I wasn't born depressed. I turned every single bit of that on with chronic stress. Stress will kill you. I have an adverse childhood experience score of six. I was molested by my first stepfather had to shit beat out of me by my second stepfather, emotionally, verbally, and physically. My senior year is when it turned violent. My parents were divorced. They 100% they swept being molested by my first stepfather under the rug. Grew up in, in chronic stress. Now, there are people who grew up in worse situations, but mine was bad for me. It led to 24 years of chronic lifestyle diseases. Everything was ignored from my mother, my dad. Nobody paid attention. They didn't know. I, I'm assuming they didn't know. And the doctors never asked the right questions. Just like you, I was given pill after pill after pill. When I was diagnosed with lupus, I came down here to Dr. Susan Krupp. I'll never forget it. She's an excellent rheumatologist at Vanderbilt. I was living in Paducah. She literally said to me, to my face, Danny, there's no cure for lupus. It kills women every year. Here's your pain medicine. Here's your anti-inflammatories. But these will 
I can't remember how she worded it. These will hurt your kidneys or liver and I need to see you back in six months, every six months. What? So anyway, that is why I do what I do every single day. And there you have it. So there's my 10 minute spill trying to wait for uh, Dietrich to come in, but he's not here. So what we'll do. Oh, I love you guys. Also, I wasn't looking over there because it stresses me out to tell that story, even though it is my story and we all have one. You've got one. Yours may be worse than mine, right? Um, none of ours are worse than each other's. We all have our own stories that affect us differently. And what I wasn't taught in nurse practitioner school is that everyone's story, especially the first 18 years. Let me grab this book that I just finished reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Not very professional, is it? <laughs> uh, this is why I don't have my own TV show. Right here, The Deepest Well. What happens to you before the age of 18 can set you up for a lifetime of chronic disease. With an adverse childhood experience score of six, I should be an IV drug user right now. Should be using heroin or crack cocaine or, or all of it, any of all of it. I should be on multiple medications right now. And I've got about a 20 year shortened lifespan than people who have an adverse childhood experience score of less than four, I think maybe two. So all of that being said, you're not broken. You can turn anything around. And I'm so looking forward to this next season of my life with this book coming out with, you know, the office and all kinds of things and just being able to share more and more and more free information with you all every single week on whatever it is. Um, I've had to work really hard. Many of you know that my mother has Alzheimer's. My mom and I had zero relationship, zero. This is green juice. If I'd known all this was going to happen tonight, I probably would have drank wine. Ugh. This is green juice. My friend Michael brought me over today that he made. It's a, it's a really great juice, green juice in a wine glass. Um, uh, oh, my mom and I have had no relationship at all. I mean, none. We never got along. No, no, I don't remember a season in our life that we ever got along. This is not uncommon. I have learned, but being a healthcare provider to women, mainly, uh, it's not uncommon that women have a rough relationship with their mom. My mom told me when she first was starting to get diagnosed with Alzheimer's and I started cleaning up her house and she went furious one day. And I mean furious, called her best friend on the phone and said, I wish I'd never had her, blah, blah, blah. She was, she had dementia. She's in perfect control of what she was saying. So, so one of those, oh, she had Alzheimer's. She didn't know. No, she knew. And she looked me in the eye and she said, F you which was interesting because she never said that to me very often. And she said, you started pulling away from me when you were one year old, Danny, one year old. What? What do you mean pulling away from you at one? What kind of baby pulls away from their mother at one? There must be something, you know, to that. And, you know, she couldn't help it when she, when I was six weeks old, and that's all in the book, actually, she went through po postpartum psychosis. Um, and she had to be institutionalized. She stopped feeding me and stopped changing me. She told me, she always, has only mentioned it once to me in my entire life, 55 years. She didn't know day from night. I mean, my dad was in the Navy. He had to come in, take care of me, bring help in to take care of me. I was a six week old baby in Lexington Park, Maryland. And my mom got um, institutionalized. And then I think starting from then on, she'd already had an event in the in the institution prior to that in Kentucky. But it just, you know, there are some people who probably should never have had children. And mom was one of them, I think. And I'm grateful that she did. I've survived it. But it's interesting for those of you that have had to take care of your parents as they age and, and whether you're an only child or not, it's this opportunity to come full circle. And it's weird to me. It's weird. Every time I go, I try to heal a little bit more. As I cleaned out her house, I, I didn't hire um, 
I did not hire somebody to come in and do the house, like set, do an auction, all that. I did it by myself, single-handedly, one piece of paper at a time, one drawer at a time, one closet at a time, because I felt like I needed, and it took me two years. It took me from June of 2019 to May of 2020, no, 2009, yeah, May of 2021, two years um, to do it. I felt like I needed to touch everything in there. So it was this weird feeling of she had touched everything that was in that house. My mom had touched it. And now I was re-going through it and I found things, you know, so it's been a real interesting healing opportunity for me. And I hope that if you all have a hard, difficult uh, 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 relationship with your parents, whether it's your dad or your mom, that you do get some closure. I've been able to say some things that I would have never said before. And quite frankly, because I knew she'd forget it. <laughs> I just wanted to get some things off my chest. Like I, I actually said something to her. I said, um, when I was probably 13, she looked to me square in the eye and she said, Danny, you caused me to lose the only man I ever loved. I was holding a baton because I was taking baton lessons or something. And we were in my room and I, we were standing right in front of my closet. And as I've cleaned that closet out and all, I've remember, I've, I've relived that conversation over and over and over. And she was talking about her second husband, Jim, who is the child molester. And I never mentioned it until I was in my thirties. So I was probably 13 to my thirties. I mentioned it one time. She didn't apologize. I said something about it recently to her. I said, mom, why did you ever say something like that to a 13 year old? And she just shrugged, you know? So, Anyway, I've gotten an opportunity to ask some questions. I'm not getting any answers, but I'm asking questions. So all that being said, here's what I want you to know. I grew up in chaos, shit holes of chaos, nonstop chaos. It nearly killed me. But here's the beauty. It didn't kill me. God knew that he was going to turn beauty, make beauty from ashes, right? Um, I, I, I got that albatross off my neck. I've gone through a whole lot of therapy, a lot of on-site, a lot of um, EMDR so that I could be half the person that I am right now. I mean, I'm not completely where I need to be, but um, I'm better than I was for sure. And I know that every single one of you on some level can relate to my childhood. And that is one of the reasons that I wrote this book right here. The whole first part of it is dedicated. Well, the whole book's dedicated, you know, to you all. Uh, but it talks about trauma, childhood trauma and what happened to me. And I just don't think that our, our healthcare providers ask us enough. Again, you weren't born suicidal. You weren't born depressed. You weren't born with anxiety or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or lupus or high blood pressure. We turn those on. And I just want you to know that if I can turn it off and all the chaos that I live through and everything that you can as well. My uh, One of my very best friends was in town this weekend and we were talking, the three of us, about your 30s and, and 20s and 30s and how chaotic they are. I wouldn't go back to those years for any amount of money. I created a lot. I followed in my mom's footsteps with my uh, marriage. I had an affair. That was horrible. Don't do that. Highly recommend you don't do that. I mean, if you're that unhappy in a marriage, I was in a verbally abusive marriage, an emotionally abusive marriage, not physically. Um, but I don't recommend you have an affair, for crying out loud. If you're that miserable, get out of the marriage. Get out of the marriage. So I followed in her footsteps on that, and that made me really angry. But I've learned a lot from that, and it's a piece of my story. I'm not ashamed of it anymore. I do I have very few regrets. That's that is one of my regrets is that I cheated on my ex-husband because I don't it doesn't matter what's happening. You don't do that, period, at all. But all that being said, guys, you all, I haven't had a chance to read this because I know that I would start crying if I read what you all were saying over there. But this is not at all what I thought we were going to be talking about tonight. But I promise you we will reschedule Dietrich because I am so interested in emotional intelligence and what he does for a living. So I'm going to just keep it short tonight. You know a little bit about my story there. Uh, hopefully you guys have pre-ordered the book. Here's what I'm going to ask for you. Here's my ask. 
I want every single one of you, and I probably should have typed this in. I didn't. I want you, if you do not get my newsletter, you need to sign up for my newsletter right here and it'll pop up newsletter. That way you, you'll get the newsletter that we send out, which I've been behind schedule because things have been a little crazy with my life with my mother. But what I want from you all, this book comes out in November, November the 9th. I need to know your favorite podcasts. Don't put them on here, please, because I will lose it. I need you to email EA at dannywilliamson.com. Somebody type that in the comments for me, please. EA as in executive assistant. I'm fancy, apparently. EA at dannywilliamson.com. It's Angela Powell. It's my assistant. Um, and I want to know what podcast do we need to reach out to? Do you have a TV station that you have contacts with? I'm going to be on News Channel 6, the NBC affiliate, affiliate in Paducah, Kentucky, November the 5th. The book comes out the 9th. So that's my hometown NBC station. I'm going to be on there at the noon news. And I just reached out to them and they said, absolutely, Danny, um, we'll book it. And so that's when it is. Do you have connections at TV station? Do you have connections in a magazine? Any magazine? I don't care. Tennessee Magazine, Your College Magazine, People Magazine, Oprah. That would be the pinnacle. I don't care if you, maybe you're a publisher for a magazine. We have a press release. We have article. I have everything about this book. Uh, TV shows, podcasts, uh, radio shows. Send everything you have to ea at dannywilliamson.com. Thank you, Nancy, for sharing that. Um, because it's time. We actually are running late on this one right here. Uh, running late getting this out and getting this done. Uh, but I need to sell this book. I want to sell this book. I would love for this book that is written about every single one of you. I mean, it is. It's my six steps to healing. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, decrease stress, cultivate community, common sense stuff. I would love to say that your little hometown girl from Gilbertsville, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, your local family nurse practitioner over there wrote a book that is helping people change lives. This isn't about making money because I can tell you I got about eighty, ninety thousand dollars in this book between the ghostwriter, the book, the book. Oh, good Lord. It's it's terrible, actually, how much it costs. You won't make a penny off of this. And it may not go New York Times bestseller or publisher weekly bestseller. But my goal is to get speaking gigs to be able to help millions of people down the road, millions of people, somebody who may hear me on NPR, right? And say, holy crap, if she can do it, I can do it. Let me cut out one thing. I'm going to cut gluten out and see how I feel. That's what it's all about. It's not about the money. I have saved money. I have saved money since I was a little kid because I came from nothing. So I am it's not about making the money back. I won't make the money back. Maybe I will if I get paid to speak at places, which would be fabulous, but it's about helping women. I don't think we lift each other up nearly enough. And I am only going to support women going forward who support other women. It's as simple as that. I was in a store in Paducah, Kentucky two weeks ago, two weeks ago trying to book my book release party in Paducah at this store downtown. That's a fabulous store. And we were, I was standing there with a whole bunch of stuff. I've known the owner of this barbecue store for 25 years. And, and we were planning it the weekend of November the 5th. And I said, I got to go meet my friend so-and-so here for dinner right now. So we'll figure this out later. And she goes, yeah, what about, just with that inflection. Yeah, what about, I'm just going to say, yeah, what about Amy? That's not her name. And I said, what about her? And she said, well, I'm not, I'm not judging or anything. My friend has, is dating a woman now after being married for years. And I said, no, you better not judge her. I said, you don't have any room to judge her. She said, well, you know, she went from being married to, and she kind of has said, I said, to what? I said, you don't have any idea what happened in her marriage for 15 years. You have no clue what happened in her marriage. I was furious standing in the middle of this barbecue store downtown Paducah. I had my hands full. I laid everything down right in the middle of the store. And I looked her square in the eye. And I said, you know what? This is not the place for me to have my book signing. 
and I laid it down and I walked out. And I, I don't know that I've ever been that angry. It's probably been 15 years since I've been that angry. You do not tear other women down ever. Zero tolerance for that. Zero, especially when you don't know what they're going through or what they've been through or the abuse that they've been through. I mean, shame on you, shame on any of us. So I challenge every single one of you. If you're shopping with women, if you're shopping at a women owned business, you support women who support other women. Simple as that, period. And do not participate in the gossip. If there's gossip about, don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. You cannot speak for somebody else's shoes, period. All right. That's my, that's my soapbox tonight, guys. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. I can't wait. I want Angela to wake up tomorrow morning. She's been on vacation for a month in California. Not really a vacation when you got your kids and you're driving to California for a month. But anyway, I want her to wake up tomorrow morning with so many emails with, oh my gosh, I've got connections with, I don't know, Nashville Lifestyles. And here it is, you know, send your information. Let's get an article in there. I've got connections with this radio station in Ohio. I don't care. I will go wherever. It doesn't matter to me as long as I can afford to do it and I can get there. I will go and talk about this book. All right. And about healing, healing our bodies from the inside out. So speaking of books, my friend Lindsay, who's on here tonight, she told me to get this book. Do you all have the book Redeeming? Wait, Redeeming Love. <laughs> I'm like Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, one of my all time favorite books. I literally read the entire book in one night and I don't stay up past nine o'clock. I was up to like two or three in the morning. Um, she told me this week about this book, Lineage of Grace, five stories of unlikely women who changed eternity, Ruth and Bathsheba. And I don't even know the other five in there um, who, who she's talking about. These are women just like us, the women of the Bible, clearly, uh, who are flawed, who are broken, who maybe committed adultery who, I don't know, maybe they cussed, I don't know. And apparently, I haven't started the book yet, but I bought one for me and I bought one for Ella and I gave it to her uh, today when she was in town. Then I can't wait to read it. Ruth is one of my favorite books in the Bible, if not the favorite book. If anybody knows this book, tell me about it. Uh, I can't wait. I'm going to start reading it tonight. It's going to be my thing. So guys, listen, come to the supplement store and see me if you live local. You all know that we have hired a dream team there. Britt is the supplement store manager. And if you've met her, you know that she is brilliant, like beyond brilliant. And Mackenzie is the assistant manager. Well, Britt is leaving. Her husband's moving them back to Utah. Totally unexpected. Um, just heartbreaking. And I'm devastated for her. I'm devastated for us. Well, I'm devastated for us. I'm not devastated for her. I mean, she, if she wants, you know, I know it was a hard decision because she loves her job. We probably got about four weeks with her. I need a supplement store manager. I need a supplement store assistant manager. Mackenzie just went to manager apparently. But if you've had any interaction with Britt, you know that she took my supplement store to a whole nother level. Uh, she is absolutely brilliant. Yes, Lori, I agree 150%. I have cried. I have been upset. I have cussed. I have, I have said lots of things about this situation. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I know she's sad. I'm trying to figure out a way to use her remotely. But if you know anybody who is amazing with supplements, we're going to be hiring at the supplement store. Not what I thought it thought because we have zero turnover. I'm so blessed at that office. Um, really, we have no turnover. Jackson was the only turnover, but we had him short, short time because we knew he was going to medical school. So you all, yes, God has a plan. He had a plan for me. He has a plan for me. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for integrated family medicine, and he has a plan for the wild and well supplement store. So anyway, speaking of Jackson starts medical school tomorrow morning, August the 2nd at 7 a.m. Central time, 8 a.m. Eastern time where he is. 
say a prayer like full blown starts class tomorrow with 260 medical students class of 2025 so say a prayer all right guys next sunday night dr joe Pizzerno. this is going to be amazing i had all this typed up look we're dietrich i do a lot of work for you all uh, i listen i do uh, but that's okay. We'll file this one away till next time. Joe Prezono next week. He's a urologist. Do you know he's the only urologist in Middle Tennessee who does um, who does a laser vasectomy? Laser vasectomy. So if you have a husband or a partner or somebody or somebody who refuses to get a vasectomy, which I have no tolerance for that either. The older I get, I have lower tolerance for things on some things. Uh, if we're pushing children out, the husband should get the vasectomy. Simple as that. Um, but it's a laser. No downtime. He's going to be talking about that. He's going to be talking about prostates. He's going to be talking about urethras. He's going to be talking about urinary tract infections. He's going to talk about men's health and women's health. Um, he's he's amazing. So that's tomorrow, next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. And then the Hashimoto's meeting is August 27th. If you have Hashimoto's, put it on your calendar. Come see us at the supplement store and do me a favor and order this book. We've got to take it number one on Amazon. Okay. Pre-order it. It will be shipped to you on or before November the 9th um, for sure. And uh, yes, it is my all-time favorite book, Judy, as well. I've given it to lots of women. Okay. Lineage of Grace. I'm going to start it tonight. It's what I'm going to do. I'm not doing one thing for work tonight. I am going to read that book. I never do that. All right. Um, and yes to Jackson. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry we did not have what I planned tonight. But you know what? You got to learn a little bit about my um, history. If you didn't know, sign up for our newsletter. Send your emails. Send your email to ea at dannywilliamson.com. And guys, get out there and um, do something great. Do something great, right? Meal prep tonight. Maybe go earth. It's still daylight. I think I'm going to change clothes and go walk. I'm doing my flipping 50. I did my workout this morning. I think my arms are getting a little bit stronger there. I think so. I think. I think so. And uh, we got a girl on here who's lost 110 or 115 pounds. So if you say you can't do it, trust me. This one right here, oh, Lori James, she has lost about 110 or 115 pounds. I'm calling you out, Lori, uh, by changing her diet, moving her body, controlling her portion sizes. She went keto first. I think that's right. Oh, I may be so wrong. Uh, or paleo first. I can't remember. Um, and so I want y'all to know that there, where there's a will, there's a way. We may have Lori on here one night. I can't get you on right now, girl, because I can't do that off of this program I'm using. But oh my gosh, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. She's lost 120 pounds. What in the world? Okay, listen, this beautiful woman that you're looking at right there, I got a hold of her when she had already lost, I don't know, Lori, maybe 75, 100 pounds. I don't know. She was pretty well on her way. Um, she went keto first. That's what I thought. She went keto first. But I think if you all think that I should put Lori on here one night, now, Lord, she may say, absolutely not. Yeah, look at all those hearts going up, Lord. You you hit your heart buttons. And Lori, you know where I am because I see you every week pretty much. Um, if you want to do this, if you want to do a Sunday night service with me on how to turn your health around one bite at a time, um, you know, doing it the right way. No, nothing fancy, um, nothing, no pills, no potions, none of that. Just good old hard work and portion control and movement and knowing your food sensitivities and all that. Then let's let her. Oh, she says no. She doesn't want to do it. Well, fine. If you don't want to. Oh, Cindy C. Yes, everyone needs inspiration. Lori, you'd be amazing. You know, I'll, I'll run with it. All you have to do is just share your story. We'll talk about it later, but if you don't want to, that's fine. But let me tell you something. That woman right there is a rock star. And she's, I've had patients lose a lot of weight on different, doing different things. And this one has done it right. She eats real food, one ingredient food. She knows what it is that her food sensitivities are. She moves her body. She works on stress. She tries to sleep good. She poops good. All the things. 
Lori, sorry, to put you on the, see there, see Teresa. I mean, Lori, everybody needs you. And um, I know I put you on the spot because I'm over here just stretching time. When All right, guys, it's 636 at night in, in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to take off my little dress over here, put my walking clothes on, and I'm going to go out for a walk. And then I'm going to start reading this book tonight for fun because I never read anything for fun. It's all these stinking books back here on medical stuff. And I'm going to drink my green juice and I'm going to go to bed and I will see you all next Sunday night with Dr. Joe Preserno. And, um, and if we can talk Lori into it, we may do a midweek Wednesday service one night that has her telling what she's done. Uh, what do you say? Uh, if I can help, aha, look at that. All right, you all take a picture of that and we'll remind her of that if she backs out. All right, I'm going to leave it right there, ladies and gentlemen. We love you guys so much and I will talk to you soon. Sorry we didn't have Dietrich on here tonight, but you know what? Um, it's okay. I think everything works out for a reason. I wouldn't have thought to have asked Lori to come on here and that is a great thing. You're not broken. You weren't born broken. You have never been broken. You are 150% exactly the way you are right now. This is exact. God's not surprised at all where you are on your journey. If you're not happy with your journey, then turn it around. It's in your control. Guaranteed. Love you guys.